Context switching is a reality. It's happening all the time. The question is, how many context switches are there in our system, and how long are they? In order to answer the question of how long are they, then I would turn you to the, to the operating system vendor or its manuals. Um, you could even do the analysis yourself. The good news is that the length of a context switch, and let's call it S, that length of time is more or less fixed, though it is dependent on your processor architecture and your memory bus architecture. Remember that a context switch is about moving lots of CPU register contents out to memory and then bringing in from memory some saved CPU contents. It's more or less a linear piece of code. It's going to be relatively straightforward to compute that, but it would change if you switched from a 32-bit memory bus to an 8-bit memory bus or if you upgraded your processor, things like that. So you get that number, and let's just call it S. And this should be a relatively small number. We should be talking about you know, nanoseconds, that kind of thing. But it depends on your processor speed, of course. Now, the question is, how many of those context switches happen? And for this, I want you to think back to that, that uh, Mad Magazine folding exercise I had you think about earlier. Because the high priority task, and let's forget all the rest for now, the high priority task takes control of the CPU by preempting some other task, and then it runs to completion, and on the way out, it hands control of the CPU back to another task. So if we just think about that highest priority task, it has one context switch on the way in and one context switch on the way out. And this happens every period. So in the worst case, the utilization number goes up by 2s over t. So we can combine, we can, we can re rearrange our utilization formula for that particular task. And we can say it's whatever its worst case execution time is, plus two s's is our new numerator. What this really does for us is to bring that inside the utilization number. By bringing that inside the utilization number, we can still apply the 69% or the 83% without changing that formula. Now, what happens to a medium priority task? From the point of view of a medium priority task, the high priority task never happened. We've already accounted for those context switches. We've folded the page. And now the medium priority task has one context switch in each time it runs and one context switch out each time it runs. So again, we take the old numerator and we add 2s and we divide by the period. That's our new utilization. So it's true that utilization for the task has gone up. And in fact, the more frequently a task runs, the higher percentage impact context switches are. If you have a task that runs once a day, the price of two context switches is de minimis. If you have a task that runs every millisecond, the price of two context switches could be expensive. If you have something that's running more frequently than a millisecond, you're talking about a reasonable percentage of the CPU. So that turtles on turtles explanation holds up all the way down to the lowest priority task because the lowest priority task requires a context switch from the idle task, <coughs> then it runs to completion, and there's one more context switch on the way out. So uh, we modify our utilization formula slightly, and with this one slide, we've eliminated context switching as an issue.